cataractcoach.com. IOL Exchange is not always the solution because your options depend on the surprise refractive outcome. Let's watch this case here. Anonymous surgery is operating. You can see the patient had, looks like a extended up the focus lens, torque version done a while ago, capsule contraction there, making a couple of pairs of teeth, filling the eye with some dispersive viscoelastic, maybe trying to get underneath that rex's edge. You can see there's a little contraction on that capsule rexus. Looks like a vividly extended up the focus lens with torque marks on it. And so this patient's going to get this lens explanted and replaced with another lens. Oh, there's a wide phaco incision made. So a wide incision made there temporally using a needle here to get under that rex's edge, more viscoelastic. I like that idea. That's that visco dissection. Get that dispersive viscoelastic behind the IOL optic. Get a wave going across to help dissect it. Again, we sped the video up to 4x normal speed. Notice the surgeon has a couple different pairs of TC's incisions here. And that's going to help things out a lot. And now cutting into the capsular rim. And looks like trying to do an enlargement of the rexus here. So there's the cutting, and now let's see the tearing of the rexus to make it larger. You probably don't need to make it any larger, to be honest. These lenses are soft and flexible, and you can get them out that, that smaller rexus, no problem. I don't see the upside in enlarging this rexus, at least not right now. So surgeon's already nicked that capsule, bring it around here. Okay, bring it in a little bit. Oh, going out, going out, buddy. Whoa, 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 that's going way out there. That's making my heart rate go a little bit up. I'm getting a little nervous. Okay, now cutting the other way. So yeah, that was a little too far out for me. For my flavor, that's a little too far out, way out to the zonules almost. I'm not sure what's cooking right there. What's that strand of extra tissue there? Ooh, be careful. Oh, God, more capsule. This is making me, oh my goodness, stop, 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 stop already. So th this is, uh, that's a little aggressive for me. Maybe your tolerance is higher than mine. So forgive my theatrics here. So more visco dissection. I like visco elastic, always cheaper than vitreous. Looks like the posterior cap is intact. Let's get that lens up using some sort of a hook here, getting that freed up. Remember that haptics make it stuck in the bag, nice and gentle. Good job, good job. Get that lens up. I'm watching the video for the first time, by the way, with you. We watch this together. We're a team, right? Come on. You've heard my voice for, I don't know, a thousand or two thousand cases by now. So now, dissecting that one other haptic up, it's a little stuck here. I'd be more cautious. I wouldn't pull so hard. I'm just afraid of breaking things like zonular support. So more viscoelastic, that's a good move. You want to be gentle in getting that off because remember, with this Alcon lens, that a bulbous tip. Ooh, I think you finally freed it, did you? Yeah, there it is. Okay, it's out of the eye. Now, I would do my twist and out technique. Oh, enlarging the incision more. Enlarging it more. More viscoelastic. I like viscoelastic. Let's see the technique to explant the lens. Twist and out's my favorite. Um, spatula going across the eye. Oh, we're gonna fold it inside the eye. You can refold it using folding forceps. This must be an older surgeon. You gotta be 60 years old to do this. Because the reason is, now let's talk about the refractive outcome and how it dictates the treatment. If the patient had a myopic outcome, just assume the patient had a spherical equivalent of minus 150. So minus one diopter of spherical, minus one of astigmatism times 180. I would just do PRK or LASIK. It's a much better result, much more accurate. You don't have to go back inside the eye. What if the patient was emetropic? Plus 50, minus one at 180. So spherical is still Plano. Simply do LRIs in clinic. You can do the LRIs, even the slit lamp. What about a hyperopic outcome? Plus two, minus one at 180. Well, the spherical equivalent of plus 150, now you got no other choice. Do an eyeball exchange because LASIK for that is going to be pretty ugly and not that accurate. So again, on this one, I do an eyeball exchange. So depending on the outcome, you may do either LASIK or PRK, you may do LRIs in your clinic, or you may do an eyeball exchange. Let's get back to the case here. Now, as I was saying, you can explant that lens using this folding method, but, but think about it. Six millimeter optic folded in half is three, Right plus the thickness of the IOL, plus the forceps thickness, you're looking at a 3.5 millimeter incision or wider to fold it inside the eye. So don't fold it inside the eye. Do twist and out. You've seen it on Cataract Coach before. If you haven't, go to cataractcoach.com and search for the keyword twist, T-W-I-S-T. So here you go. IOL, capsular bag being filled with viscoelastic. Uh, not sure what's going on here. A little bit of polishing was done. I don't know if you need any polishing. More viscoelastic. Let's get that new lens in. Again, not sure what's going on with that hook and, and going out of the iris there. 
Um, let's see what's going on next. Again, I put the new lens in. CTR going in. Okay, you can do a CTR. Again, That's I don't see the upside of this eye with a contracted capsular bag, but okay, there's a CTR on the eye. Plus, when you had that rexus enlargement that went way out to the zonules, are you sure the CTR is okay? I'm not sure, but I'll trust your judgment, Doc. More polishing? You don't need to, bro, 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 bro. You don't need to polish anymore. Come on. Now let's see what we're going to do. New lens going in. Is it going to be a vividity again? Is it going to be a monofocal? What's going to happen here? Let's take a look. Here comes the new lens. And it looks like um, non-toric. So no toric marks on the lens. And it looks like also a vividity lens. Okay. So you replace the, a toric vividity with a non-toric vividity. I can understand that. Again, we talked about the various scenarios there. But also, now you have a huge incision. You got a 3.5 millimeter or greater, maybe even 3.6, 3.7 millimeter incision. That's going to cause some astigmatic flattening. So please take that into account with your calculations. Otherwise, the case looks reasonable. So again, remember, eye oil exchange is not the perfect solution for every case. Figure out what's the refractive surprise, and should you do LASIK, PRK, LRIs, or maybe if you need to, do an eye oil exchange. Just something to think about. Thanks for watching.